it's uh, seven o'clock. We had a couple already exited the building, but uh, and a few more came in. So uh, uh, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Genesis chapter six. And, I, and before we get started, though, I want to give you an update on Brother Floyd. Uh, he had his uh, <coughs> surgery today to open up the arteries in his in his leg, and uh, <clears throat> it was a long day. They got him in there pretty late. They didn't get him in there near about when they said they would. They had an emergency popped up and. He didn't get back there until after 4 o'clock, about 4.20, somewhere around in that time, I think. And uh, in about an hour, he was out. And they did uh, use a new technique called a balloon on that artery. They said he was the first one they had done it on, and it was successful. It opened up the uh, upper clot and uh, had good blood flow. And the doctor didn't get down to the bottom where there's one in his calf, but they said there was one in his calf. And this doctor don't think that it's a... Uh, Clock. He wants to do some more investigating and and uh, find out exactly what it is. But he said he did have blood flow, and so that's a big plus. And uh, Mary uh, uh, sent me a message a few minutes ago. Said he's up eating, and uh, he was hungry and thirsty. So that's where, and they're going to keep him tonight and uh, talk well, to him bless. some more tomorrow. So uh, thank you for your prayers, and I know they appreciate that. And and all those that went down there today to be with them, thank y'all for for doing that. And, it meant a lot to them, and uh, so keep saying prayer for them, and uh, that uh, that the healing and uh, and all this would take place. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, hey y'all. Before we get started, uh, <coughs> uh, Brother Jim Paulson, you lead us, please. Hey Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to get together tonight. To study your word. And Lord, we just ask that you be with each one here and just let us open up our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us. And Lord, we just want to give you thanks for the good report that you that we've heard on Brother Floyd. Lord, we just know that Lord, the, the doctors can do some wonderful things. But we do know that you are the great physician. Lord, we just ask that you lead your graces upon the doctors as they attend to Lord and to each and every patient that they come to or whatever the case may be. Lord, we just ask that we go and wait for this place later on and that you give traveling grace to everyone that's here back safely to their homes. Lord, just let us come back at the next opportunity. We ask these things in our name. Amen. 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 Well, if you got your Bibles, like I said, turn to Genesis chapter 6. And I've already been told tonight that uh, we probably won't get past the first four verses, but I think we're going to be able to handle and get past those. So uh, if I get somebody to go ahead and read verses 1 through 4 for me, we'll jump in with both feet. Who wants to be the first to read it? Go ahead. When mankind began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful, and they took thy, and they took any thy chosen as wives for themselves. And the Lord said, My spirit will not be will not remain with mankind forever, because they are corrupt. Their days will be one hundred and twenty years. The I can't say that. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. All right, let's go ahead and, and talk about this. We're going, but before we jump into all this uh, this uh, debatable stuff, I want you to understand that uh, anything that we come up with from tonight is uh, is purely something that, uh, uh, I mean, the Bible just don't give us a whole lot of information here. So we left our own devices and left our own imagination and and what uh, uh, study others have done uh, that, that may prove to be vital uh, or, or books that you've read on, the, on it. But the, the thing I want to draw your attention to first is it came to pass. Uh, a lot of time has passed, and the and the multi uh, the earth is uh, has got a lot of people in it now. There's been a 
great multiplication. That's what God asked them to do was to, to be fruitful and multiply. And this had happened, and we saw last week all those names that every one of them had ended and had sons and daughters, and their sons and daughters had sons and daughters, and their sons and daughters were having. And it was just a, 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 a lot of, uh, of this uh, multiplication going on. And uh, things started to disintegrate. And uh, uh, verse 2 uh, starts it off. That, uh, and by the way, uh, this is probably the most controversial verses of Scripture in the whole Bible. Okay? That, uh, that's, that's been debated for years and years and years. So we're probably not going to solve anything here tonight. But what I want to do, you to let me do is go ahead and give you the theories that we already know exist about these verses. And... And then once I give you the theories, then you can, if you want to volunteer and tell me what you believe or what you think, well, that's fine. We'll, we'll do that. I just don't want to spend the rest of the night there, okay? And so uh, the theories that go that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. And in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men and were of old men of renown. So the theories that, that, that we have are that uh, these, these sons of God uh, are angels. Uh, most people don't believe that they certainly wouldn't be holy angels if that's what they were. <coughs> they would be uh, fallen angels, which a lot of people uh, think that is, and that's actually uh, the main theory of the Jewish people is, is what they actually believe. And uh, so uh, uh, this is what they believe that the, uh, the fallen angels came and, uh, and took the uh, daughters of men. And, uh, and the results of that was uh, that they had these offspring. And uh, now uh, the Bible don't really say that these offspring were theirs, that, that there was a result of this is there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and so uh, that that is one theory that uh, that's that, that's been said, and uh, a lot of people uh, believe that theory. I know part of people personally that believe that. Another theory is that uh, these uh, sons of God are men of renown. They are kings. They are noblemen. They are men of great uh, esteem that uh, took the peasant girls and, uh, and, and took them. And uh, that uh, the, the results of this uh, union between the no nobility and the peasants was something that was not certainly uh, that, that God would be approving of, but that uh, this is another theory that people have come up with. Now, the third one, is, and is the most popular amongst Christians today, is that uh, it's talking about the godly bloodline of, of uh, Seth and the, uh, the, the, it refers to them as the sons of God and the, and the daughters of men refers to the ungodly bloodline of Cain and these people got together. And that's the three theories, uh, theories that, uh, the theories, theories that uh, are prevalent in our society today. If there's more, I don't know anything about it. So I'm going to go ahead and let you give your thoughts on this and see what you think uh, is that. Yes, sir? At verse 4 where it says there were giants in the earth, what are, what are we going to classify as a giant? Is it going to be like, uh, I know where that word comes from, what it means. It means a giant, a tyrant, a bully. Is it going to be just like that, or is it going to be like during the days of uh, Goliath? Well, since they since they use the word, uh, the Hebrew word is what? Nephilim? Is that the word you're referring to? That means uh, uh, tyrants. It, it, can, it also, it can mean more than that. Uh, let's see what this, uh, what this says right here. Man of stature, notorious man. Yeah, they can be men of stature. And, and uh, I think uh, one of the things that you have to look at is the, the reference that it makes mighty men which were of old and men of renown. And I've been reading just uh, just in the last couple of days where uh, Joshua, when they went across the Jericho River before they crossed, they picked uh, the men, the, the Bible described the valiant soldiers that he was taking with him as men of valor and men of renown. 
And so it, this, this word here uh, not only could symbolize somebody of giant stature, but it could also uh, uh, symbolize someone who was uh, uh, well looked up to. And so that's a theory that you have to, that's, a, that's what you have to determine in your own mind. But I do believe because of what happens after they get uh, into the land of promise and there were giants in the land and they talked about, you know, the spy said that he felt like a grasshopper up beside them. And uh, <coughs> so he, he insinuated they were tall, very tall people. But uh, it, 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 and it compares them and, and there was different uh, nations that had these people that were referred to as giants in there at that time. And they compared them to the Nephilim that the, the Hebrews talked about. So you have to make up your own mind because we do know Goliath was a giant man. Nine feet, six inches tall. He was huge. And so, but we still have giants today. Yes, sir. Uh, all the Bible at home, my reference Bible at home, this man says that it's estimated, no proof, that these men were between seven and nine feet tall. There's just nothing to prove it or nothing else. I'm not exactly sure he said from historical information that that was estimated they were between seven and nine feet tall. Yeah, but at this stage, in this early, we have no way of knowing that what they look like or how tall they were because the Bible does not give us a description of their height. It just refers to them as giants. And so, uh, but I think it's logical for any of us. If I said, I saw a giant today, what would you think? A large person. A tall, very, very <laughs> tall person. Okay? There was a, I, I, matter of fact, I, I went to a lot of trouble for this right here. Uh, we have had people all the way up to 8 feet and 11 inch, 8 feet, 11.1 inches. This man's name was Robert Wadlow. He was an American, and he died in 1940. He was 8 feet and 11 inches tall. That's a giant. Yes, ma'am? He's one of my relatives. He's one of... What happened to me? I have... You know, you know why he's so tall and why you're not, okay? No, okay. Yeah, that, that's good. Every, every giant, everybody's a giant to you, Vicky. Uh, there's a, one that died in 2014 named uh, Leonoid uh, Stanzik. He was eight feet and five inches tall. And we got them that range everywhere. But, but if you want to know what the description of a giant is in our, our day, it's from six feet five up is considered giant. And usually these, these men that, uh, that I have this list of right here, and I didn't get all of them, but uh, some of them lived a long time ago, and some of them have died in, uh, in uh, 2012, 2014. And, you know, there, there's been modern-day giants. We see them playing basketball all the time uh, that are over seven feet tall. And, and some of them look normal, but some of them don't. So giantism is, is, a, is a, uh, uh, something that is described as a, as a result of the pituitary gland of the brain uh, giving out too much growth hormone. And it's, a, and it's a, something that's a, a not unique. It's just it's everywhere. It's all over the world. But there are tribes in Africa that have really, really tall men. It's nothing for one of them to be seven and a half feet tall. And, it, and it's, it's all through the tribe. And they, they say theirs is genetics. And so we, we don't know about these men here. And also in verse 4 it says that the giants were already in the earth in those days. So no. were they already there before these marriages were even mentioned? Uh, they were there at that time, yeah. But that doesn't mean that they were there before Adam and Eve. Right, I get that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not what that means. But it was there. It says they were there before the sons of, of God knew the daughters of men. Yeah, okay. Any thoughts? Come on now, y'all. Don't climb up. Uh -huh. Well, you know, the bottom left. Oh, excuse me. Sound like y'all fell. You know what? we got to remember that uh, Satan was just... Right. Been trying everything he could to break up the line to keep the Messiah from coming. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. That's, mm -hmm. that's what he's been trying to do ever since day one. He's Amen, trying brother. Trying to do it here. Let's do it. Let's do a simple test. I'm because I'm, I'm interested to know how many of you believe that this is means that uh, 
the fallen angels uh, new women. That's always been my understanding. That's always been my understanding. Four or five, okay. All right. How many of you believe that uh, it's nobility, kings, knowing peasantry? Nobody believes that one. I didn't believe Oh, we got one right there. Got one believes that. Okay, how many of you believe that it's a godly bloodline versus the ungodly bloodline? Uh, that's, that's the most common that uh, people believe in. And what the thing is, is for people not to get hung up and argue about what you believe when there's no proof in any way, uh, shape, form, or fashion. And so that's the thing that we need to remember when we look at these things. And, you know, I think God gave us this information. And he, and he didn't give us this information to confuse us. He gave us this information to tell us what was going on during that time. And so the, the, the thing that we really... Uh, need to know, uh, uh, we need to look in verse 3, because this is, yes sir. I, I do believe the sons of God is referenced seven to eight times throughout the Bible, and each time it is referred to angels, is how it's. Except one time. Except the one time. Paul referred yeah. to the sons, of the, the Christian men as yeah. sons of God. But all the rest referred to right. angels. That's absolutely correct. Most of the time when the, the reference was made to sons of God, it was talking about angels, except when Paul said it, it was referring to Christian men. I do believe there is one reference that Jesus made that said they are not sexual, but in heaven. That's exactly right, too. I got that scripture. I can't remember which one Repeat it is, that, but please. it is there. The angels do not get in marriage. The, the, yes. I'll read you the scripture. Uh, Matthew 22 and 30, Jesus said this when they were trying to trap him about whose wife this woman would be if she had seven husbands. He said, for in the resurrection they neither marry or are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Yes. They don't marry. There's no marriage in heaven. No. Yes, sir. I won't be the only one talking. No, 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 you're good. <laughs> okay, we got, we got Jews and Gentiles, right? And out of those Jews and Gentiles, we got uh, lost people and saved people. Right. Now, the same people, over in 1 Corinthians, it talks about spiritual and carnal. The spiritual what? Spiritual. Paul can talk to them as spiritual, but if that's under carnal, uh -huh. spiritual and carnal. Spiritual and carnal. Right. Right. What about, and there's two classifications of angels those that remain true to God, and those that the godly and the ungodly. Yeah. That, as far as I know, uh, that verse that you just got through quoting, that's in Matthew and Mark. Yes. But it says, in both places, it says the angels which are in heaven. So to me, it's, it's saying that the ones that are in heaven, they're the ones that remain true to what they were created for. Exactly. And that's a, that's a good, that's theory. I mean, that's what has so many people believe in so much different stuff is because we don't really know, but we do know this. While the angels that were fallen at one time were also that way. And then when they fell, the, the thing I have, the problem I have with that theory, and, and uh, I'm not trying to dispute it, is that why is it not still going on today? If, if Satan could corrupt this earth, his satanic forces would corrupt every woman on this planet. I believe that. A lot of people think that that you have to, uh, and you do have to overcome Satan. But a lot of people give Satan so much credit that it almost sounds like you can't go to heaven unless Satan lets you go to heaven. And we don't ever want to get that to that point where we give him any glory, any praise, or anything. And to think, now he has the power to influence people, to cause people to do things. He has the power to. Now, I would believe this. I would believe that a, a, a demon possessed a man and they would, could have a child with a woman. A, a demonic man could, but he would be filled with the, with the demon. But I don't know whether that demon itself could impregnate a woman. I just don't know that. And I don't think any of us know that. There's no proof that that ever happened in the Bible. But I think if it could, oh man. What would this world be like if that were possible? Because those those same demons and forces are still here that were there then. Okay? 
those same forces are still here. So why aren't they doing that with, with all the women that they can? And Melissa told me when I said that to her, well, they are. You know? You know, when it comes these crazy people are saying they're having sex with chandeliers, you know. I mean, they're recording these stupid things and, and making but, it known and it's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I think Paul kinda of hit a hit a nerve when in Second Corinthians chapter six fourteen when he, he told us to be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And and I think this kind of touches on on this where where he suggests that the unbelievers and the believers don't get together. There's nothing good going to come out of, from an unbeliever and a believer get together on purpose. The Bible teaches the believer to have better sense than that. And a lot of the problems in our homes today is because there are marriages between a believer and an unbeliever, and the believer says, I'm going to change the unbeliever, and it don't happen. The, the, the unbeliever winds up changing the believer to be something they're not, they don't want to be. And I think that's what you see in homes today. And uh, so, you know, because so like, you think you never you put a good kid and a bad kid. That good kid don't teach that bad kid nothing, but that bad kid can teach him everything, and that has to do with everything there is. Right. Marriages, kids, animals, it don't make any difference. They always learn the bad habits first. That's right. And not only that, you never have to teach a, you don't have to teach a child to do bad. Mm -mm. We don't even teach them that. They already know that. You teach them to do good. But but I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time here. I was interested in this. I think that actually the key verse in these first four verses is verse three. And uh, that's even controversial to some people. Some people say, see, that's when God lowered the eight limit of men, they can live 120 years now. That's not what he said at all. He gave Noah uh, uh, the, the information that in 120 years, I'm thinking to destroy this planet. That's what he's talking about. And he, and he uses this, uh, this statement, my spirit shall not always strive with man. God has a limit. Now listen to me. God has a limit to his tolerance that he sets himself. Okay? You understand that? God has a limit to his tolerance that he sets himself. And he set his limit here. He gave him 120 years to, to get it right to change. <coughs> And he, he already makes his statement that that's what he's going to do. <coughs> okay? Any, any more questions or comments about this, the, the giants and, the, and these things? And yes, I believe there were giants. I believe there were giants. In the reading over in Deuteronomy, uh, that one, that one, uh, that one giant, that one by his measurement for his bed, 25 inches to 14 to, feet, sir. It's 14 feet long. The bed was well, it was big. In, in the Bible, I have it says 18 and a half feet, okay, eight foot wide, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a big bed. This, this Bible study Bible, it, it says something about giants. It says the Hebrew word for giants means fallen ones. From the verb meaning to follow, many ancient cultures have legends of titans and demigods. This verse appears and explains the common memory of humankind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and that's a reason the Jewish people believe that because of the definition of their word. It was the fallen angels because the, the definition of the word means fallen ones. But it can also mean a fallen godly man. Because God didn't approve of this union. Okay? God didn't approve of this union. This union was unapproved. Just like uh, we're not to be unequally yoked together. Believers and unbelievers are not supposed to be unequally yoked together. That is a, a reference that God has made to us. And, it, and he knows that it causes great conflict and it causes great problems. How many of you know, a, 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 and I don't even know who, but a couple, a man and a wife, and one of them are just as godly as they can be, and the other they're just meaner than the devil. You ever know anybody like that? Just meaner than the devil? I might be being tough. <laughs> I didn't say which one it was, John. <laughs> but you know, you, you see it all the time. I, I remember uh, when I was a kid going to church, and, and there was no men at the church, and those wives would come and bring the kids, 
and just cry over their husbands because their husbands just never would go to church with them. They never prayed with them. They never, and, and this is what, what the Bible's talking about. He said you can't put righteousness and unrighteousness together. You can't put light and darkness together. They don't blend. They don't work. <coughs> and so that's what his warning is to us is to, to choose who we marry according to the plan of God and the will of God. And there's very few of us that pray and ask God for our mate. Most of us pray and tell God who we've chosen, if we pray at all. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to just move on. We need to move on anyway. Any other comments about this, this scripture? In, in verse 3, where it ends off, in number 20 years. That is from the point of, of God telling them, you don't turn from your, basically, you don't turn from your wicked ways, then the Noah, the flood. Do you think this day and time, from the time that Jesus Christ was crucified, do you think that God has a definite day of coming back? I mean, absolutely. it's a stupid question. But no, it's not a stupid question. That's an absolute day that God knows, only God. Jesus said he didn't even know. He didn't say it like he did here, because he... No, he didn't say it. But he did say, and that's all we need to know, he said, I'm coming back. All we need to know, Christ said that. Mm -hmm. And he, did, he knows that. <laughs> he knew he was coming back, but he said that he, <coughs> an hour, he didn't know. That's what he said. That that was already... It, 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 I don't know where it had even been determined yet. I don't think... I don't really know since Jesus was God that he had even made up his mind when he was going to be yet. Now that sounds sort of kind of strange saying that about God. But God in his own wisdom, he can determine that time just like he did here. He had put up with this nonsense all he was going to put up with. He said, now I'm going to give you 120 years you don't play another total with. And uh, he, he promised us later on he'd never do that again. And he even repented that he did that. That he wished he hadn't done. We don't know from the time of Adam and Eve to this point. No. But Satan don't know when the end of time he lives. No, he don't. He's ready. No, he don't know. He just know what. He just knows the result of the end of it. And he knows to be ready. He knows it's going to be about. Yeah. He knows that. Well, the 120 years is like a prophet. That's that's a warning. And what he's given us for the, the end of days, or whatever you want to call it, that's a promise. Right? Yeah. So the promise he doesn't, you can promise to do something that you don't have to give a deadline. Yeah. True? Yeah. Okay. Sense well, he made the promise that he's coming back. He just didn't make the promise when. Yeah. yeah. So I but think if he wanted us to know, he'd have told us. That's right. He, yeah, that's right. He would. I and disagree with that. You think? I think if he told us what day he was coming back, people would get lackadaisical, lay back, wouldn't pray as much, wouldn't be as concerned. Well, no need me doing anything. He's coming uh, October 10th, so I'll just coast to then. I think God didn't tell us for that reason. Yep. Pray each day just like he, he's coming tomorrow. Well, that's the way we're supposed to. Right. But here, he and did I give them that's the why day. He, didn't tell us. <laughs> he gave them 120 years. Right, but he didn't tell us. And they didn't believe it. And they continued to live as evil as they could possibly. And they didn't believe it. Because here's the thing about our generation today. There's fewer and fewer people even believing anything about God. There's millions and millions say, I believe in God, but they don't believe God. If they believed God, they wouldn't live the way they do. That goes for all of us. If we believe God, we wouldn't live the way we do. So we need to say, believing in God and believing God are two different things. Amen? Because if you believe God and don't do what God's shown you to do, that's a bad, that's, that's dumb. If you believe God. And so most of us believe God and we know that we sin and we fail God and we believe we can go back to God and apologize and get forgiveness and it, and it works that way. And that's the way he's explained it to us. And he says, I'm going to forgive you over and over and over and over. And he does. It makes you wonder what he seemingly looks on the world today. <laughs> what is he thinking? Well, let's just move on. We're going to talk about that. All right, let's uh, go ahead and uh, somebody read for me verses 5 through 7, please. 
And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for repent of me that I have made them. Okay. So God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. That was a good question, Chad. I reckon what he sees now. If this is what he saw to cause him want to destroy <coughs> everything that breathed, what does he see now? What does he see now and what is his thoughts? Now we have a promise that gets made later on that he won't do that this way anymore. That's the only reason he hasn't already done it again, I think. But anyway, it says that, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And listen to this. Every imagination of the <coughs> thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That means God was even not only seeing the man's actions, he was seeing the man's thoughts. And that spills over to us very uh, forcefully in the New Testament. When Jesus said this in Matthew uh, 15, 19, and 20. And, and this started because the disciples were seen eating without washing their hands. Now this is what the subject was, but look what Jesus says. He says uh, in Matthew chapter 15, 19, and 20, he said, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile of man. Okay? Jesus was saying it ain't what goes in you that defiles you. It's what comes forth from you that defiles you. And this is what was going on in this generation at this time. There was nothing they wouldn't do. And y'all, I'm telling you, <laughs> I just thought, you know what? When Roe versus Wade came up and I thought, I don't care what any of you think. You know, somebody said the other day, well, where does this say in the Bible that, that, that don't do an abortion? It says it very plainly. Thou shalt not kill. Right. <coughs> Amen? Amen. And, and, you know, who would have ever thought that we'd be having a debate on whether a baby was a human being or not? That were, whether the, the baby in the womb was alive, a living soul or not? And I look at these idiots that, that send, spend billions of dollars sending spaceships to outer space and if they can find a drop of water that's got a wiggle in it, that's life. And they look inside a womb and see a baby and it's nothing. And I got a big problem with that. And I can't imagine in that day that they were any more wicked than we are today. Amen. That's don't see it. I think it's got to do with numbers. I think God looks at from his past he, 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 he kept Noah. He got it down to one good man. He did the same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah when he got down and down and down until he could find just a few men. Mm -hmm. I think he'll do the same thing with us. I think when there's just a few of us here that's, that's when he'll decide. That's my opinion. Yeah, that's I a good thought. When the, when, the, when the bad outweigh there's no good here to, save it all. He'll take what's left and, and be in them. That's mm -hmm. the pattern that he's had in the past. Yeah. But we don't know how many thousands or even hundreds of thousands or millions of people there were on the earth at that time. We don't even really know how scientifically advanced these people were. We don't know what they were. We don't know what they had. We don't know how advanced they were. We don't know what they did. We don't know anything about these people right here. Only thing we know is every one of them was wicked, and he found one man, <coughs> one man in all the earth that was worthy of his grace. That, that ought to scare us to death. One, one man. Amen. And then the, the, verse 6, it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved his heart. You know what one of the commands of the New Testament is to me and you that are filled with the Spirit of God? 
one of the commands is grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And that's what these people had done. They had grieved God. They had made God sad. They had made Him angry. They had brought wrath upon themselves. And let me tell you what, God is God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of love. But don't you think for one minute He's not a God of wrath. And when His anger is kindled against you, woe be unto you. It's bad. And we don't like to see God that way. We don't like to think of God that way. We need to study the Scripture because the Scripture shows us God that way. It does show Him love. It does show His mercy. It does show His grace. It shows the great extent. Let me ask you a question. How much more does He have to do to prove to you that He loves you? What else can He do? What more do you want from God to show you that He loves you? And that ain't the question. That ain't even a fair question. Because God's already died for us. So that's not a good question. He done gave all he had for us. The real question is, what can we do to show him how much we love him? And that, on our knees and beg his forgiveness. Exactly. The answer is so easy if we would just hear, our, hear it and do it. All on our knees. Amen. You know how to solve this? So the Bible tells us, and you've heard this scripture over and over, if my people who are called by my name, amen, who knows that scripture? Will humble themselves. Amen. And what? And pray. And do what? Turn from their wicked ways. Seek my face, I think it says. Yeah. He tells us what to do. <coughs> And do you believe him? Because he showed that with Noah when he extended grace. So that's what we need to do. We already know what we need to do. And so that's the way you prove to God you love him, you obey him. Amen? Now, that's, that's gone. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Wow. It's so sad because it wasn't, it, it wasn't the animal's fault. But the animal's you know, it sustained man though. You know, but it... That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But he saw everything as filthy yeah. and broken. The That's what he saw for everything. us. Right. Left for us. All right, let's go ahead and read. Uh, somebody read for me verses 8 through 13. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all the people on the earth, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy them, both, both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all the way around. Put a door on the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life from un under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You were supposed to stop at 13. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, that was a good read, though, wasn't it? How can you stop when you get started on that? That's okay. You're good. You're good. Well, the, the thing about it is that someone did find grace. And I want you to know, it don't make any difference for your New Testament or Old Testament. You're saved by grace. Amen. Amen. Noah found this unmerited favor, as she read, that she said, the favor of God 
that is His grace. Noah found this, and I want you to look at what the Bible says why Noah found grace in God's eyes. And it says Noah was a just man. You know what? <coughs> you can't be too fair. Huh? God don't want you beating anybody out of nothing. He was a moral and ethical. He, he was morally upright. He was a just man. He did what was right. He was a man of integrity. He was a man of integrity. And then he says he was perfect in his generation. Now I want you to notice that. Don't ever think Noah was perfect. He was not a perfect man. There was no such thing even then. Noah was not a perfect man, but he was perfect compared to everybody else. Well, you have to remember, he was an ancestor of who? Enoch. Of Enoch, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, he is basing that when he says that, looking at that too, because he came from... He was in the godly bloodline right. He's the uh, from Seth. Right. Yeah. And Enoch, the one that God took, was his great, great... I think great, great, great grandpa, somewhere in there... But it says also he was perfect in his generations. That means that he was way better than everybody else around him. But here's the, the catch. It says the same thing about Noah. It said about Enoch. He walked with God. Now, don't you listen to this. Don't you ever think that the relationship you have with God don't determine what the Word says about you? Amen? The walk with God is the relationship that you have with God. The walk with God is that you hear Him, you speak to Him, you worship Him, you give Him what He's what's due, you obey Him, you're glad to love Him, you're glad to hear Him, and you're going to do what's right even if you don't agree with it. That's walking with God. Because God told you to do it that way, that makes it right. Amen? Noah walked with God. In this generation and these kind of people that he was living with, that says volumes about Noah. He walked with God. Let me tell you what, even in this world today, in this Christian church, <coughs> your Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. And the stronger the relationship with you that you have with Jesus Christ, the more people will see your Christianity. Amen? Amen. Amen. We've got this misguided idea that, uh, you know, when we look at what it says about being perfect in generations, all we got to do is better than everybody else. we got to walk with God. Amen? And when you walk with God, you're going to act better than most people. And that's what Noah did. So he had this relationship where he walked with God. And then it talks about his three sons. But look at the earth. What does it say about the earth in Noah's day? The earth was corrupt before God. And was filled with violence. Is our world filled with violence today? Huh? When you turn channels 3, 6, 12 news on tonight, I promise you, you're going to see who got killed in Shreveport. And you say, well, turn on tomorrow night, and you're going to see who got killed in Shreveport. And you do it tonight and after that, you're going to see who got killed in Shreveport. You did it last night, you saw somebody got killed. This is a violent world. We live in it. It's full of violence. Now, what does corrupt mean? Godless. <clears throat> it's got lots of definitions. I wrote them in my Bible, so I'd never lose them. Listen to this. Dishonest. Is that prevalent today? Is there crooks out there? Huh? They're on every corner. They call your phone every day. Mm-hmm. Politics. Uh, uh, you know what? In Webster's Dictionary, when I looked up corrupt, when it got down to the synonyms for corruption, that's the only word it used referring to people was politicians. <laughs> so it's the truth. That's the, only, that's the only relation to people it used was politicians. And every one of these words I'm calling out, it used it before politician. Amen? Now you think about that. How I many of you believe our politicians of today are honest, upright, just? <laughs> yeah. Now listen to these words. Dishonest. No integrity. Listen to this one. Decayed. Putrid. Infected. Tainted. Immoral. 
depraved, untrustworthy, rotten, contempt. That was the world Noah walked with God in. Now I want to tell you something tonight. Don't tell me you can't live for God in this world. You can't. If you walk with God, you can walk with God through hell <coughs> and walk out the other side. Amen? Right. The Bible says if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you can get through it. Why? Because he's with you. Amen. That's what walking with God is. You must walk with God to be able to survive the corruption and the chaos and what's coming to this world. That's the key. You be found moral and just and perfect in your generation and walk with God. And it don't matter how corrupt the world is. Amen? The, how bad the world is should not relate how you act. Huh? How, how bad everybody is around you should not equate on how you act. You act according to the will of God and the ways of God. And if you do, because we don't need to please anybody but God. Amen? Amen? Noah pleased God. And guess what it got him? <laughs> Salvation. Not only him, his wife, his sons, and their wives. Salvation came to Noah's family because Noah walked with God. Now, this is good stuff right here. This is strong, a strong message to us today. And the corrupt, and, and we look at this world, you know, I hear people say, I've heard preachers say, if, if, if the Lord don't come back soon, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, who would have thought? Sodom and Gomorrah didn't even have homosexual weddings that I know of. Huh? They're as bold now as they were then. More so. They're bolder. And to cap it off now, we, we are the foolish people. We're the hypocrites. Because we don't believe that they're, they should be able to do what they want to do. Amen. So you get a little idea what Noah was really going through in that time, huh? How many of you think Noah was very well respected in his community? They probably thought he was the biggest nut that ever lived. Noah didn't run around with all the women. His wife didn't run around with none of the men. They walked with God. What's wrong with them? They don't have no fun. They're not groovy. <laughs> Y'all ain't heard that word in a long time, have you? <laughs> uh, not out with the in crowd. They're old funny daddies. And they think everything we do, they look down their noses at us. They ain't nothing but them old hypocrites. They just look down their noses at us. We ain't done nothing wrong. Y'all, the world looks at us that way too. When you try to tell them what the Word of God says, you're judging me. The only word they know. That's the only scripture they know. They don't even know where that's at. They don't even know, even know what it means when it's said. Huh? But Noah faced all this too. Can you imagine what Noah faced when he started building a ship? A what? A what? What are you building? It's going to do what? You can imagine how loud he put up with. The Bible don't even give us all that information. But it says, and, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh, he says, had corrupted his way. The earth is filled with violence. And then God said, behold, I'm going to destroy them. And then, when he chooses Noah, and he proclaims that Noah has found grace, God begins to talk to Noah, and the walk that Noah had turns into something we don't like. 
<laughs> yeah, that dirty, ugly four-letter word. Work. work. This was work. Son, he didn't have solar <laughs> like we have. He didn't have electric nothing. He didn't have battery-powered drills. He didn't have any of that stuff. He didn't have nails. He didn't have none of that stuff. You know what he had? <laughs> A strong back and God. Don't tell me that God don't expect you to work for Him. He does. And Noah had 120 years to build this ark. And so he said, I want you to build me an ark. I want you to make it out of gopher wood. I ain't got a clue what gopher wood is. That's the wood I like said with cypress. Huh? <laughs> My Bible describes it as cypress. Does it? Could be. Speculation. Yeah. Yes, sir. I've heard, what well, you made a statement just then yourself. That it was 120 years. And no place in the Bible does it say it took him 120 years. They don't say it took him that long to build it. But it, God said, yeah, I'll give you that long before I end it. And so I don't know if that's how long. He might have not started our for 20 years after God said that. I don't know that. Well, he already has three sons, right? <clears throat> he already had three sons. They're already married. He's already married. They were already married. They were grown. And they had no children. Look over in uh, chapter 11, second. Okay. And she was the, she was the middle aged son. Jacob is the oldest. She was the middle aged. And then Ham was the youngest. Well, that's debatable, too. Look in uh, chapter 11, verse 10. Okay. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and beget so-and-so two years after the flood. Okay. So he was 98 years old when the flood ended. Mm -hmm. No, it was 500 when he, when he got called to build the ark. Yeah, but I'm saying Shem was 98. And he already had, he was, whenever he was given the commandment to build the ark, he shouldn't be 120 because he's only 98. 98 means blood to the engine. So it couldn't be 120 years. I mean, anything could be done in 120 years in the size of the ark. Well, I just told you that uh, Noah was what, 500? 500. And he was 600 when he entered the ark? But that don't say that's when he finished the ark. Okay, so we know that there was a hundred year span from the time he started the ark till he got in the ark. When he's 600 when he got in the ark? Yeah, 600 when he got in the ark. Uh -huh. And he was 500 when he got the command to build the ark. Uh, no. <laughs> no. If he, right, was, he, was, if he already had sons and then give him a commandment, he'd have to be older, a little older. He was 500 when he got those three sons. Okay. He was 500 when he had the three sons. And we don't have the age of Noah of when he started building the ark. No, we don't have we the age of Noah. We have the age when he got in the ark and the flood came. Right. Okay. So it looks so, like his, his son was already made a medic whenever he was given the command to build. Yeah. So if he was 98 when he had the children out of the ark, in uh, chapter 11, that he was 98 years old. Yes, Shem was. Shem was. So, if he was 98, uh, he already had, he didn't have children when he was married, when he got in the ark. Okay? So, it don't, we, and we know how long they were in the ark, but we don't know how long after the ark landed that he had the children, do we? Two years. How long after the ark? You he said he had him two years after the ark landed. Two years after the flood. It just says two years after the flood. It don't say. Whatever that is. Okay. And Shem lived after he begat. Okay. This is a. Uh, he was a hundred years old and begat two years after the flood. And that word is our facts add. Our facts add two years after the flood. So he was 102 years after the flood. So he was 98 when the flood hit. Okay. And he was all, you're right, he was already grown. 
That's what I'm saying about times in the Bible. The Bible, th these verses here go through lots of years sometimes. And that's a good, that's a good catch. Because he was 98 years old when, when the flood ended. And then he was, uh, he had the child. Or he was a, he was a hundred two years after the flood. So he was 98 when the flood ended. And so whatever it was in that lifespan, however old he was when he married, was when they could have got in the ark. I don't know. Because the Bible don't mention in verse 9 here about the daughters. It just mentions the son. So we don't know in that time frame when Noah started building the ark and the boys got in it, how many years it took Noah as they were married when they went in the ark. So we don't know in that time frame. We don't know how old these boys are. These boys might have been just children when he started building the ark, got grown, got married, way before he ever got through with it. Mm -hmm. Looking at the size of it and the work crew he had, <laughs> yeah, it was a lengthy process. Yeah, but it's just it's one of those things, food for thought, that you know don't really matter. I guess it just uh, you know you have to be careful when you do give times and dates because you, they're, they're not accurate. We just know that God told him it was going to be a hundred, or told them it was going to be 120 years. And so it starts in these generations. Then he told Noah to build the ark, make it out of gopher wood, told him how to make the rooms. And if you ever get a chance to go up into Kentucky, they have a replica of this ark. And, uh, and, the, and the, so how many of y'all been up there to see that? Yeah, okay. So it's, it's something to behold, isn't it? And then the, 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 the museum that goes with it. The ark is, is given to us in cubits. Uh, the Bible refers to cubits. It has a cubit and a great cubit. A cubit is the length, a length of a man's hand, arm, from his elbow to the tip of his longest finger, which is about 18 inches is what they, they figured out. The great cubit is from the elbow to the end of the finger plus a hand's breadth. And that was a, a, what they called the great cubit. The Bible don't say the great cubit here. It says the cubit. Okay, so that's the uh, figure they use. At that figure, this arc is going to be roughly 450 feet long uh, by uh, 75 feet wide by 45 feet tall. It's going to be big. Yes, sir. I read in the history, uh, in the uh, comments of my Bible, that those basic fundamental measurements are still used today. The length, width, and, and height. Fundamental. Now they're making them tremendously bigger than that now. Yeah. But the basic uh, shipbuilders use that fundamental, the same one that Noah used same to build. Ratio. Yep. Right. Same. Same ratio is a better word. Yeah. Okay. I seen a little documentary where they re remade the ark, a little stone, <coughs> and they put it in a little <coughs> tub and caused a lot of waves. I mean, they uh -huh. went to great detail making it. Have you seen that? Yeah. They had other ships, Titanic replicas and all that, but the ark would ride itself. Yeah. It, we wouldn't, they couldn't sink it. There's no way. I mean, they sink. throw the waves to it, but these big battle cruisers we have now, they, they ride right the bottom. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, God knew how to make a ship, didn't he? They wouldn't yeah, sink. That's right. <laughs> anyway, there's three decks or three levels, and they're made of gopher wood. There's, that's to be sealed within and without with pitch. Now, that's... Uh, that's got some, and we're fixing to the, the end that we're going to have to stop. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, pitch is significant because the pitch uh, kept the water out, and it was pitched on the outside, and it was pitched on the inside. Amen? There was no water going to get inside this boat. If it is going to come in through that window, because that was the only opening beside that door. So this thing was sealed, and it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, Symbolic of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. Believe God sealed the door, didn't He? God closed the door. Yeah. So let, let's go ahead and, and stop here, and uh, we'll resume where the waters prevail in the chapter. Uh, not, not that chapter seven. I'm looking at uh, the promise of a covenant. We'll start in verse 18. We'll uh, start back next uh, Wednesday, and uh, we will talk uh, a little bit about the covenant. Uh, because this is the first time covenant is mentioned in the Bible. Genesis is the book of first. The first covenant God made with man was with Noah. The first mention of grace too. And the first mention of grace also. 
So, uh, any any comments? Any anything anybody'd like to add to tonight? I know we spent a lot of time on stuff that, uh, that was just kind of interesting. <coughs> I didn't realize they were aboard that ship, on that ship for as long as they were. Uh, it, it wasn't like we would think. It, was, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And I, I kind of had my mind maybe four or five months later. But it was a little over a year. Yeah. That's why they had to carry the seven uh, animals, uh, seven animals to sacrifice during the they were on there a while. Their whole life was right there in that ship. And that, that just amazes me. I'm, I'm astounded at the possibility of them living in that one place with all those animals for a year. It, it, but it, with God, it would be possible. Yes. If we don't get anything else out of what we talked about tonight, I want you to understand that it's important that you continue to walk with God no matter how filthy and corrupt this world gets. And that God expects us to work for Him, and God expects us to obey Him even in a corrupt world. Mm -hmm. And He rewards us for our faithfulness by His grace. Always, that's what I want you to get out of tonight's lesson, that you can follow God, and God will take care of you. <laughs> Amen? And you know what? A lot of people say, well, I know people that followed God and they died. Yeah. <laughs> Guess where they're at now. <laughs> now the question comes to my mind. Ham, Shem, and Japheth and their wives, were they equally as how should I say uh, righteous? As righteous as faithful. Faithful? It don't say. But from the way Ham acted later on you wonder. I believe the righteousness of Noah saved his family. I believe that God didn't want to put Noah through that knowing his son had died in the flood. You know. How and, sorry would it be to, to have walked with God then without the buffer of Jesus that we have now? I mean, did he, they didn't have all the rules that, that Moses gave. How much harder was it to, if God can't look upon sin at all without without a cover, how hard would it have been to walk without they were before using before Jesus was here, right? They were using animal sacrifices and that's proven because they, well, that's was, what he that's what he had to just he, he was using animal sacrifices and their blood was was imparting some sin from him. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Do you think when it, they used the text um, Noah's generations, do you think it also did <coughs> that he showed that he was, you know, be faithful and raise his children, the generation, to keep it the godly bloodline? Yeah, it and could. showed that that's why he was going to save them too? Well, God knew in advance that when the ark landed in, in just a couple of years, he was going to reestablish the godly bloodline and also the ungodly bloodline. And it's going to be evident when, when they land a few chapters later. You're going to see that. It's evident. God did also, knew that. Did he also save all the fish? He didn't mention anything about the fish. Fish? It, it, later on, it's going to say that all animals that breathed yeah. and, uh, on, on land. It talks about the animals on land. No, fish, fish didn't, I don't think, died. Some of them may have. I don't think the great whales and all that stuff. Because salt water and fresh water don't mix. So I figured they found pockets and lived, and he he let them live however he wanted them to. I think they ate everything. <laughs> <coughs> All right, anything else? <coughs> Thank you for your song, Sister Jean. That was good tonight, and uh, God bless you all. Let's stand. I liked it. That was good. You didn't write them words down. <laughs> and so, by the way, we got you on there. It's gonna be on YouTube now. So. <laughs> Brother Martin, would you dismiss him, please? Thank you, Lord, that we can be in your house tonight, Lord, and, and uh, thank you that uh, we're here and we can have this time, Lord, to, to study your word and let it sink into our hearts, Lord, and, and uh, take this out in our daily lives, Lord. And uh, something that's been on my mind, Lord, is like, you know, when we wake up every morning and go out there, 
let us think about if uh, we are influencing people or if they're influencing us, Lord. And let us keep your word in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all.